16, Turks and Caicos Islands, getting ready to take this flight over to Grand Turk, speak to the young brothers this morning, followed by the young men. And then tomorrow we're in South Caicos, 10.30 in the morning for the young men, 12 p.m. for the grown men. This is National Independence Day here in the Caribbean. So shout out to the brothers and sisters from Providenciales. Shout out to the brothers and sisters who came out the South Caicos Grand Turk. I'm gonna see y'all in less than an hour, okay? Uh, South Caicos, I will see you guys tomorrow. And then Providenciales, we're gonna end it all tomorrow. University of Memphis, I will see you Saturday. Men of Color Conference, University of Memphis, 10 until 3. I have to find out what time I'm going to be speaking. I'm going to post that. I got to find out what time Dr. Umar Johnson will be speaking in Memphis. And then Columbus, Georgia for the first time. Make sure you come on out to Columbus, Georgia. Looking forward to that pre-Thanksgiving power lecture. Not that you should be celebrating Thanksgiving, but you know, Negroes love white folks. So most of you will be celebrating Thanksgiving. And then the day after that on Friday, you can't wait to rush out and go buy your child all of those expensive, useless Christmas gifts. So we wanna deal with that in Memphis. We wanna deal with that in Columbus. But before I hop on this flight, I need to just say a little something, something about this uh, America getting trumped up. Black folks, y'all crazy. I wanna know what y'all going crazy for. Now, that's what I wanna understand. Obama did nothing for you. You did not ask Obama to do anything for you. You defended Obama's willingness to not do nothing for you. You went crazy for Hillary, who has no history of helping black folks. Trump wins and you're acting like you lost. What did you lose? You gained nothing under Obama, which was a very big mistake because every other so-called minority group loaded up during the Obama years. Every other so-called minority group loaded up during the Obama years. Homosexuals loaded up, Latinos loaded up, immigrants loaded up, women loaded up, black people did nothing. So guess what? After Trump gets finished rolling back gains for gays and rolling back gains for women and rolling back gains for immigrants, they're still gonna be okay because they loaded up under Obama. You did nothing under Obama except worship him, praise him, celebrate him, and defend his neglect of black folks. You're done. If you've been watching television lately, when they're talking about the racism of Donald Trump, if you've noticed, they do not include black people in that conversation. If you notice, they talk about Arabs, they talk about Muslim, Trump racism against Muslims, Trump racism against Arabs, they talk about Trump racism against Latinos and Mexicans, they haven't mentioned black people yet. You're not even in the conversation. That's your fault. That's your fault. You took your agenda off the table when you said Obama didn't have to do nothing for black people except be black. Y'all remember that? Remember that? He don't have to do nothing for me except be black. Well, guess what? That's exactly what he did. So you don't, you're not even in the conversation no more. Arabs, Latinos, women, immigrants, black folk don't even count. You're not even mentioned. They're talking about Trump racism. You're not even in the conversation. This is your fault. Political stupidity. You let bourgeoisies like Al Sharpton convince you not to criticize the president. He's not your brother, he's the president. He's not a black man, he's the president. And instead of holding the president accountable, you let him skate. And in letting Obama skate, he skated your ass all the way back to Jim Crow. All the way back to Jim Crow. You are back in Jim Crow. In fact, this is worse than Jim Crow, because in Jim Crow, they talked about you. In Jim Crow, you were a topic of discussion. You not even relevant no more. Donald Trump ain't got no black agenda. And let me say this, let's, let, let, let's be clear. Why did Donald Trump win? First of all, Donald Trump won. His victory had nothing to do with Hillary. Donald Trump's victory had very little to do with Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump won because white folks were tired of looking at a black face in the White House for eight years, period, period. 
In other words, it doesn't matter which Democratic nominee would have ran against Trump, they would have lost. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. It doesn't matter which Democrat ran against Trump, they would have lost. Because white folks wanted nobody in the White House who even remotely resembled Obama at all. Not because of his politics, not because of his policies, but because he was a Negro. Hillary was Obama's Secretary of State. Hillary was Obama's Secretary of State. The mistake Hillary made was being that man's Secretary of State. You are automatically cast in the limelight of the black president, Obama. It don't matter who would have ran for president, they were going to lose because Obama is a Democrat and white folks needed to clean the White House out of any African energy. They wanted to purge the White House. Hillary lost because this was a purging of Negro energy from the White House. You don't understand white supremacy. That's right, it was a purge. Hillary was the choice. Hillary was the choice. But the problem was the power structure, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the Warburgs, the CFR, the Trilaterals, the Order of Rome, the Skull and Bones, they underestimated how sick and tired poor white folks were of status quo politics. Hillary was the choice. She met with the Bilderbergs a couple months ago. She was given the approval. But poor white folks in America, which make up the majority of Americans, said, not this time. If you put a member of Obama's party in that White House against our wishes, we will have a mutiny. We will have a revolt. We will have a, a civil war. What did Donald Trump say? Donald Trump was clear. Donald Trump said, if you steal my election, I will fight you to the end. If you steal my election, I will fight you to the end. Not only did Trump say that, white racist organizations were threatening to march on the White House. This is the first time in American history where white folks told the power structure, you don't choose this time, we choose it. They try to use CNN and headline news to assassinate Trump's character in the media. It did not work. CNN was going overtime on Trump. It did not work. And you don't need to be concerned about Donald Trump. You need to be concerned about the people Donald Trump going to put around him. I'm not worrying about Donald Trump. He's not no politician. He don't know anything about national policy. But Newt Gingrich does, Rudy Giuliani does, Chris Christie does, George Bush does. It's the ones around him who don't care nothing about no black folks. And I don't want to hear y'all crying because Obama cared nothing about black folks either. What's the difference? What's the difference? Okay, there's a small difference. I'll give you that. There's active racism and there's passive racism. Obama and Hillary, passive racism. They're not gonna do nothing against you, but they're not gonna do nothing to help you. Rudy Giuliani, Newt Gingrich, that's active racism. They will do things against you. Now let me tell you this. A lot of these black bourgeoisies, bougie Negroes, are gonna go out of their way to become Republicans, watch, watch, mark my words. A lot of these middle-class college educated blacks are gonna switch parties, become Republicans, and start kissing Donald Trump's ass to try to get some crumbs from that white racist Republican table in the White House. How much you wanna bet? We're all the proud black Democrats. You don't even hear about them now. People are like, oh man, the Republicans is back. We gonna have to switch. We gotta find out something to do. I told you black folks don't need to be Democratic or Republican. That's your problem. If the Republicans know you're not going to vote for them, no matter what, they're not going to take you seriously. And if the Democrats know you're going to vote for them, no matter what, they're not going to take you seriously. Why are black people overwhelmingly Democratic? Why are black people overwhelmingly Democratic? Because when Roosevelt came into office back in the 40s, 30s or 40s, whenever that was, when Roosevelt came into office, he came in with the New Deal. The New Deal. 
He implemented social service programs, social security and welfare and food stamps and all these other types of programs. So black folks said, oh, the Democrats like us now. Because from the formation of the Republican Party up until Roosevelt, we was all Republican. Then we jumped ship ran with Roosevelt with the New Deal, which turned out to be nothing but a raw deal. And we've been blind Democrats since then. We've been blind Democrats since the 40s. Blind Democrats since the 40s. How has it benefited you? It hasn't benefited you at all. You don't need a black politician. You need black power. Same thing I told South Africa. Same thing I'm telling Turks and Caicos. Same thing I told Kenya. Same thing I told Ghana. Same thing I told Nigeria. Same thing I told Jamaica. Same thing I told Bermuda. Same thing I told St. Croix. I don't care about a black face in a high place. I want black power. If all you need is a black face, they'll give you a black face with no power. Bougie Negroes controlling the politics in predominantly black countries. When are we going to learn? When are we going to learn? There's only one good thing about this Trump situation. And the Hillary situation would have been just as bad because it would have put your ass back to sleep. Y'all love going to sleep. Black folks love falling asleep. You don't want to do no work, so you vote for Democrats hoping they're going to fix all your problems because your ass too lazy to fix your own problems. Talking about did you vote? And you out there buying Walmart gifts for Christmas. Did you vote? You out there buying pig's feet for Thanksgiving dinner. You think the vote was the most important thing you could have done? Do you not understand money controls politics? Money controls politics. Politics don't control money. Money controls politics. So you don't want to use your money to control your politics. You want to use your money for fancy cars, Gucci bags. You want to use your money for nice houses in the suburbs to get your weave done, get some new Tims and Air Jordans. That's what you want to use your money for. And you want to go vote for white folks and you think you've done something. You vote for Hillary. Look at, look at this. You vote for Hillary and then you run to the supermarket and give your money to Arabs, Anglo-Saxons, Latinos, Chinese, so you can cook your Christmas dinner to celebrate white supremacy's extermination of the original Afri African people in this country. That's right. You want to celebrate the extermination of the original Africans in America. That's your Thanksgiving. Your Thanksgiving is a feast to honor the extermination of African people. That's what your Thanksgiving is. But because you voted for Hillary, you think you've done something, but you're going to take all your money and go buy some food to celebrate the extermination of the original Africans in America. And then the day after you eat, you're going to run to Walmart, Kitty City, uh, uh, Gimbel's, Macy's, online Target, and spend all your money on useless gifts. Look how ridiculous that is. You're supposed to be using that money to control, dictate, and influence your political landscape. And the bougie blacks are not going to tell you that you need to organize your money to bring about political change because they don't want you organized. They serve white folks. They don't want you organized. They want you to stay disorganized because a disorganized black folk can't hold nobody accountable. Who can you hold accountable if you disorganized? Who can you hold accountable if you disorganized? Nobody. That's why the church don't want you organized. Black politicians don't want you organized. NAACP don't want you organized. Urban League don't want you organized. The Masons don't want you organized. Nobody wants you organized because disorganized black folk can be exploited. What the Marcus Garvey said, the greatest weapon used against the Negro is disorganization. The greatest weapon used against the Negro is disorganization. Stokely Carmichael Kwame Ture said if you organize a little, you get a little done. If you organize some done, but if you don't organize at all, you don't get anything. That's what Stokely Carmichael Kwame Ture said. We got to organize. They keep talking about Trump this and Trump this and Trump this. His whole campaign was about making America white. Let me tell you another reason why Trump won. Obama pushed homosexuality down America's throat for eight years. Although homosexuality has its origin in Greco-Roman culture, there's a lot of white folk who don't support that lifestyle. And Obama promoted it, propagated it, and advertised it. He went overboard with that. You got fundamentalist Christians in America. 
You got fundamentalist Catholics. You got Jehovah's Witnesses. You got a lot of different Christians who don't believe in that. And Obama pushed it down America's throat. They couldn't wait to get him out. He pushed immigration down America's throat. He pushed everything that white America does not stand for except black folks down America's throat. The only thing he didn't push down America's throat is black progress. He pushed everything else down America's throat. They couldn't wait to get him out. They said this country wasn't founded for this. This is about by white, for white, and in the interests of white. That's right. Make America white again. People running around talking about all the racism going on in America. White kids coming to school saying, go back to Africa, go back to China. White kids coming into school with swastikas on their shirt. Racism against Arabs, racism against blacks, racism against Indians. This is what America is. Why y'all acting like this ain't what's supposed to be going on? This is what America is. Do you forget where you live at? Do you know how America was made? This is the United States, born in birth in racism against other people. Born in birth and built on the racism of, of African people. What was you expecting? I wanna know what you sleeping Negroes was expecting to happen. Yeah, you party for eight years, didn't you? You partied under Obama, didn't you? I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope these eight years, I hope you party and had all the Obama fun you want because it's over now. You will never be discussed again. You will never be discussed again. Now with that being said, let me give you the silver lining. The silver lining in the Donald Trump cloud is since America is going to be made white again, we no longer have to argue against post-racialism that's the good news see obama had his handcuffed to post-racialism in multiculturalism with trump being the president you ain't got to argue post-racialism it's over with trump being the president you don't have to argue multiculturalism it's over so if the police kill a black man now we could call it what it is white supremacy when black kids get miseducated now we could call it what it is white supremacy when black folk don't qualify for the loans at the bank now, we can call it what it is, white supremacy. That's the good news. It's time to become unapologetically African. It's time to become unapologetically African. All you soft Duncan Hines, uh, tasty cake, Twinkie cake, jelly spine black folks better learn how to stand up now because now it's us versus them. On the political economic level, it's us versus the political economics. It's time to man up and woman up now. Ain't no more can we all just get along. Your extermination has been announced. This is the purge part four. Ain't no more molten, ain't no can we work the, uh-uh, it's over. It's every race for themselves like, like Garvey told you. Like Garvey told you. So now we can call the kettle black. Now we can call white supremacy, white supremacy. This is our time to unite. This is our time to organize. And I'm telling you now, if you're still pushing I love everybody politics, I want nothing to do with you. You're still pushing I love everybody politics, I want nothing to do with you. In the conscious community, we need to get our shit together because I don't know what the hell we doing. Keep talking about useless information. Stop talking about stuff that don't matter. What's wrong with you, Nick Rose? What's wrong with you conscious Negroes? You so-called learned Negroes. You ain't building nothing. You ain't organizing nothing. You just teaching and getting paid. You the new T.D. Jakes. You the new Eddie Wong. That's who you is. You the new Creflo Dollar. Except using the Bible, you are using black consciousness, nigga. Where your organizations at? Where your institutions is at? Y'all so worried about my school. What the hell is you building? What the hell is you building? unapologetically African. I'm about to end this because I think the plane is here. It's time for me to go to Grand Turk for this debut, brothers and sisters. Memphis, Tennessee, I will see you Saturday, University of Memphis, Men of Color Conference. Columbus, Georgia, Tuesday, November the 22nd. It's time for us to unite, family. We got to unite. I will organize and work with anybody. You do not have to be a revolutionary, pan-African nationalist. You do not have to be a Garveyite. You ain't even got to be conscious. In fact, forget the conscious people. 
I want the regular black folks who want to help us improve our condition. Conscious folks don't do no damn work. Conscious people don't do no work. They just want to lead. They don't want to struggle. I want regular black folks. Bring me them black folks out the church. They do work. They do work. Bring me regular black folks. That's who I want to work with. Common sense, not conscious. Common sense. I don't want conscious. I want committed. I don't want conscious. I want constructive. I don't want conscious. I want consistent. You conscious. Conscious of what? Conscious that you losing? What you doing about it? Queens, New York, December 11th. I will be in Jamaica. Queens, New York, December 11th. That's a Sunday. Elizabeth, New Jersey, Saturday, December the 10th. And then we're going to kick off Kwanzaa. St. Louis, Missouri, December the 26th. Jacksonville, Florida, December the 28th. Detroit, Michigan, December the 30th. Atlanta, Georgia. Don't worry about that, Will. I'm blocking you anyway, my brother. You ain't even got to worry about that. January the 1st, Atlanta, Georgia. So that's how we wrote. I don't know what's going on. See, they keep talking about Trump all day. All day long. Because people don't understand the way politics runs in America. They don't understand how politics runs in America. The whole country, the whole world watching this. I'm in the Caribbean, they watching this. South Africa, they watching this. Because America is the bully of the planet. So everybody's concerned what goes on in America because they the chief right now. Until China flexes muscle. China really the chief, but China ain't flexes muscle. So right now, America the chief. And guess what? You are the black man who lives with the number one white man. So people consider you the number one black man. Did you hear what I just said? You are the black woman that lives with the number one white woman, so you are considered the number one black woman. What are we gonna do with our leadership on this planet? What is black America gonna do with our leadership on this planet? That's what I wanna know. That's what I wanna know. What are we gonna do? Whatever we do, the world do. You wear weave, they wear weave all over the world. You wanna marry white women? They're gonna marry white women all over the world. We, we set the trend for black folks. And you rappers, let me say something about you rappers. Lil Wayne, I don't know what the hell you was talking about in that interview, my brother. Maybe you was high on some weed, high on some alcohol. Okay? Okay? Maybe we all make mistakes, my brother, so I'm not going to castigate you. We all make mistakes. Maybe you're going to write a check to the FDMG Academy. But my brother, if you ain't got nothing good to say about the black struggle, keep your damn mouth shut. I'm talking to all you rappers. I'm talking to all you rappers. You are not the spokespersons for black America. Now some of you are well educated. Some of you are conscious. Some of you are committed. You got some rappers out there who bring in that consciousness. I've been seeing T.I. I've been coming up on that consciousness. Shout out to T.I. Him and his wife Tiny. Strong black family. I love to see that. I love to see that. Okay, you got some other rappers out there. Of course, our conscious rappers, Dead Prez and all them, Talib Kweli, we gonna shout all them out. You understand? But for you mainstream rappers, if you ain't got nothing good to say, keep your damn mouth shut because the rappers are the new black bourgeoisie. Did you hear what I said? The rappers and the athletes are the new black bourgeoisie. Y'all the new Negroes they gonna use to keep the rest of us in our place. And if you ain't got nothing good to say, shut your ass up and keep on making music. You are a musician. You are not a statesman. You are not an elected official. You are not a leader of black America. You are a musician. Stay in your lane. And that damn Charles Barkley, Charles, please keep your mouth shut. Every time you say something about black folks is disrespectful. You are married to a white woman. How dare you break your mouth to say anything disrespectful about black folks and you sleeping with a white woman? What the hell is wrong with Charles Barkley? I don't care if he's from Philly or Sixer, I don't care. AI is my man, Island Iverson to the death. You understand me? So brothers and sisters, I'm gonna get ready to wrap this on up, okay? Memphis, Tennessee, Saturday, Columbus, Georgia, Tuesday. Washington, D.C., the Prince of Pan-Africanism will be in Washington, D.C. at the Thurgood Marshall Center, Sunday, December the 4th. If you need tickets for D.C., Jacksonville, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia. Who am I leaving out? 
DC, St. Louis, Jacksonville, Detroit, Atlanta, you go to princeofpanafricanism.eventbrite.com. If you need the flyer for Elizabeth, the flyer for New York, I'm speaking, I'm not hosting, text me and I will, or email me, I will send you the flyer, drumarjohnson.com, drumarjohnson at yahoo.com, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858, radio interviews, drumarjohnson at yahoo.com, and you radio people, don't be calling me up for no fuckboy interviews. I don't play that shit. We're going to talk about real black issues. Don't, I don't want to hear about no conscious strippers. I don't want to hear about no homosexuals. Let's talk about some real stuff. All right? Because the first time you bring up some nonsense, played out, two-year-old shit, you're never getting another interview from me. Come correct or don't come at all. We ain't got time for this nonsense. Y'all want to keep bringing up, what do you think about this conscious speaker? What do you think about this conscious speaker? Why you don't work with the... Come on with that. I don't, I don't get on you the radio to talk gossip. I'm revolutionary minded. I am revolutionary minded. My whole life is dedicated to my people. Don't waste my time with nonsense and fuckboy politics. The black media is sometimes worse than the white media. The black media is sometimes worse than the white media. Because all y'all want to talk about is nonsense. Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, who getting drafted in it. Come on. Where the mass incarceration story at? Where the abortion story at? Where the police genocide story at? Where the black economic story at? This is for uh, Grand Turk. All right, my mom. So that's how we live. Make sure you donate Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey Academy. I got two schools in Georgia. I'm going to just put it out there. I got two schools I got to go look at in Georgia. They sound pretty good. Okay, two different schools. I ain't going to tell you where, but you know couple hours drive from Atlanta so I'm gonna go check out these two schools next week when I'm down in Columbus because we trying to get to school I'm ready to go your sons is ready I know your sons is ready for FDMG y'all ready for this I'm getting emails from little black boys I'm getting phone calls from little black boys I'm getting text messages I almost cried I got a letter in the mail from a little black boy he wrote it in like crayon he said dr. Umar can you hurry up and open your school because my mommy is hurt by how they treating me I almost cried he mailed this to me, little second, third grade boy. That's, that's what I'm about. That's what I'm about. You understand? So make sure you donate. GoFundMe.com forward slash Dr. Umar. GoFundMe.com forward slash Dr. Umar. You can mail in your donation, FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 6872, FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 6872, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19132. Resumes, FDMG resumes at gmail.com. It's the school of the future. Everybody else out there with the schools, I respect y'all. I ain't got no hate for none of y'all. All y'all homeschooling, do your thing. Stop hating on me, though. Stop that low-key hate For I expose your ass. Right, you understand? How many kids you kept out of special ed? None. How many kids you kept out of, out of jail? None. How many kids you kept off of medication? None. How many black parents you saved? None. I respect what you do. I respect what you do. You got your little 100 kids. You got your little 200 kids in your school. I respect you. But don't you dare compare that with the tens of thousands I didn't save and save every day. You ain't on my level. You know my level, whole tep. That's why I be calling y'all whole teppers, cause y'all let that consciousness go to your head and you start thinking you holy than thou and you ain't even put no damn work into this thing. You feel me? It's about peace. It's about peace. I'm gonna be hosting an international pan-African leadership conference. I'm gonna be hosting an international pan-African leadership conference. This is not for, if you're not pan-African, it ain't for you. I respect everybody. I respect my Moorish brothers. I respect my Hebrew brothers. I respect my Nawapians. I respect the Christians, the Muslims. I respect, but this is for Pan-Africanists. I'm hosting an international leadership conference for Pan-Africanists. From Los Angeles to Lesotho, from Canada to Cape Town. Do you understand me? From Brooklyn to Birmingham, England. We're going to come together and we're going to plot strategy. It's Garvey in the whirlwind. Is Garvey in the whirlwind? That's how we coming. I'm repping Patrice Lumumba. I'm repping Thomas Sankara. I'm repping Robert Sabukwe. I'm repping Steve Biko. I'm repping Edward Wilmot Blyton. I'm repping Bishop Henry McNeil Turner. I'm repping Martin Delaney. I'm repping Malcolm X. You understand me? That's how I'm repping. I'm repping Amy Jakes Garvey. I'm repping uh, 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 Madam Demina. I'm repping Amy Ashwood Garvey. 
I'm repping Anna Julia Cooper to Queen Mothers of Pan-Africanism y'all don't even know about. I'm repping to Saint La Overture, Jean Jacques Dessalines, Book Mandata. That's who I'm repping. Understand who you're dealing with. Understand who you're dealing with. I've been getting a lot of requests for speaking events. Make sure you email your speaking request to Dr. Umar Speaks at Yahoo. Dr. Umar Speaks at Yahoo.com. That's where you direct your speaking requests. Okay? My assistant handles all that. Dr. Umar Speaks at Yahoo. Dr. Umar Speaks at Gmail. Black History Month is filling up. All you colleges out there, don't wait to the last minute. Stop calling me in January for February. You need to be calling me now. You talking to the most requested black scholar on the planet right here, six years in a running. I got six rings like Michael Jordan. Stop the hate. You want the belt, you gotta take it. You can't hate it away. You can't hate it away. Every time I go on YouTube, somebody doing another video about me. You don't even know me. You never even met me, but you got a video about me. How is that? You never even been in my space. We never broke bread, had dinner, and you doing videos. Every time I wake up, 10 new Negroes doing videos. You know why they do videos on me? Because they get more attention mentioning my name than mentioning their own name. I would be embarrassed to say that. I would be embarrassed that I have to mention Dr. Umar Johnson's name to get views on my website, get views on my YouTube page. How many times have you seen me do a video mentioning another Negro name? I don't do no videos on none of you Negroes. I don't do no videos on none of y'all. Y'all not worth your name coming out my mouth. I don't mention y'all. I don't get no kudos for mentioning none of y'all. Every time I wake up, da 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 Get over that. So I'm about to sign out. I love y'all. Supporters, the sisters, the brothers, the elders, the youth. Keep it coming. It's Pan-Africanism a parish. It's Marcus Garvey gangbangers. It's Unify or Die. That's what we're, that's how I'm repping. I'm RBG, straight African. Straight African. That's how I'm coming. We gotta put the RBG back. Cause y'all Negroes is all into this galactic stuff. Ain't solving no problems. You just wanna philosophize about the unit. Come on. That's cute. We need some of that. But where's the practicality of it? Where's the pragmatics of the situation? You understand? You cannot hate the throne away. You gotta come take the throne. You can't take a man's country by talking negative about him. You got to come take it. You feel me? Do you feel me? Philadelphia, shout out to Philly. I'm trying to do something in Philly. I'm trying to find the right venue. You know, I live in Philly, so you know, the bourgeoisie, they, they be trying to block the prince. You know what I mean? But y'all ain't got to worry about that. I'm gonna be moving soon. Don't worry, Philly's still home and all that. But I'm gonna probably be moving soon because a prophet, you know, always has to move away to do what he need to do. All of our great leaders had to build their empire away from home. Y'all do know that, right? Jesus said it. Now follow the Bible. Jesus said what? Prophet is never accepted in his own home. Jesus had to leave his birthplace to build. Marcus Garvey had to leave Jamaica to build. Malcolm X had to leave Omaha, Nebraska to build. Mr. Muhammad had to leave Georgia in order to build. Dr. King had to leave Atlanta in order to build. Everybody had to leave home in order to build the empire. So I'm gonna go check these two schools in Georgia and if one of these Georgia schools check out, we gonna be strong. But I'm going to try to save some of that money y'all gave me because we're looking at Lesotho and we're looking at Kenya for a possible school. And it's not going to cost a lot of money to build that school in Africa. So we play our cards right. We're going to get two schools at the same time. Boom. Two schools at the same time. Boom. One in America and one in Africa. That's how we come. That's how we come. Two at the same time. You understand me? So this is the Prince. I'm going to sign out. Much love to everybody. I'll be back Memphis, Saturday. Can't wait to get back to Memphis. Dirty South, Columbus, Dirty South. Jacksonville, Florida, Dirty South. Detroit, the Midwest, Motown, you know how we do. Can't wait to get back to Detroit. Hot Atlanta, you know how me and Atlanta get down. Me and Atlanta, me and Detroit, me and Chicago, we get down special. Los Angeles, January the 7th. Los Angeles, you know how we get down. LBCU, January the 7th, you feel me? LBCU, San Diego for the Black Parent Conference. I want all y'all to come to the Black Parent Conference in San Diego, January 26th and 27th at the World Beat Cultural Center. Shout out to Queen Mother Makeda, who's the owner. San Diego, we coming. We coming. All y'all need to be there to get that training to start your chapter of the National Independent Black Parent Association. 
is black people up, Trump down. I said black people up, Trump down. I said black people up.